What's up folks, Spencer here with another lesson of React Native School. In today's lesson, I wanna to talk to you about shared element transitions. And what that means is basically taking one element, say in this example, the image here, and taking that from one screen and using that uh, same element on the next screen or making it appear as such. Uh, to do this, we're actually gonna be using React Navigation, which is my navigation library of choice. And before I actually dive into it, let's do a quick rundown of what we're starting with. You can see here, I've just got a list of uh, little cards and it's all, all the same data, but when we click on it, it's gonna go to another screen. Very similar information, we've got the same image, we've got the same San Francisco airport, international airport 40 miles away, and then we've got some lorem ipsum down here. And when we click on that text, it'll actually bring us back. So what we wanna be doing here is using shared element transitions to use the image and then this information about the airport uh, and basically instead of this transition where we see both of the pieces of information on each screen, we're gonna go ahead and basically carry that from this list screen to our details screen. To actually accomplish this, we're going to, like I said, use React Navigation, and we're going to be using a, another navigator on top of React Native, React Navigation uh, called Fluid Transitions. And basically it's a navigator that you're going to use just like a stack navigator. It's built on top of a stack navigator and it's going to allow us to use that shared element transitions really easily. So in this project, you're obviously going to need to have React navigation installed, go through that process. And then to actually install fluid transitions, you just need to say yarn add or npm install React navigation fluid transitions. And then let's go ahead and actually start implementing this. So what we've got here, we've got our index screen where we set up our navigator. We've got our list screen, which just is our cards. We render each one of those out. Um, it does have an index. I'll note why that's important in a little bit, but you can see here just all of our static information. It's all just hard coded in there. And then we've also got a detail screen. Again, very simple, uh, just rendering an image, rendering some text. So let's get to the actual uh, fluid transition. So what I'm gonna do is import create fluid navigator from React Navigation Fluid Transitions. Basically all we need to do is take this create fluid navigator and replace create stack navigator with it. I'm also gonna delete these options because it doesn't matter here. A fluid navigator doesn't have a header by default. That's something you'll need to add. So now when we click through, it's bringing us over. Obviously the transition's not there, but you can see all of our navigation logic is working the same. We're still using navigation.navigate and navigation, um, navigation.pop. So you can see API is gonna be exactly the same. Now to actually get things to transition the way we want it to, we're going to need to go into the screens. And basically what we need to do is tell Fluid Navigator which elements we want to transition. So what we'll do, you can see I've got it here already, is import transition from React Navigation Fluid Transitions. Just like how we're importing Create Fluid Navigator from React Navigation, we need to import this transition component. To use this, what we wanna do is wrap the elements that we want uh, to be shared in this component. So let's just do the image first. So we'll wrap it with transition, wrap all the items we want to pass, and then we need to pass the shared prop and give it a name. We'll just say this is the image, okay? And then we need to go to the detail screen and do the exact same thing. We're going to import transition from React Navigation Fluid Transitions. We'll go down to our details, we see we've got the image here. We're gonna go ahead and wrap that in our transition component. And just like before, we need to give it a name. We're gonna give it the name of shared equals image. These names matter. That's telling us which property is going to be transitioned over. So with doing that, now when I press this, you can see the item just kind of carries over from one screen to the other, and it works going backwards as well. Uh, now, it is important to note how this is working a little bit, and obviously the documentation is going to go into this in more detail, but basically you're limited on the properties you can change. 
So you can see here, I'm changing the width, height, and the border radius. Uh, basically the image size is 50% of the screen on the details screen, and then it's 25% uh, on the list screen. So you wanna make sure, uh, basically, you're, you can only scale images or transition them. So basically things you would be doing in uh, the translate property in your styles. Now, this may not be working uh, the way I would want it to in using native animations in the animated library, which Fluid Navigator is actually using to implement this, uh, because I'm actually changing the image size. So that's something you might want to note is uh, basically things that happen in the translate property. So something like a scale, I could say translate, or sorry, I'm saying tran translate, I meant to say transform in which you can do different translation things. So for example, you could say scale it uh, by 1.2 or 12.3, and you can see here, it's gonna be this huge image. Um, and when you use properties in transform, you can actually use the native driver for those animations, um, which is something you'll want to note, especially if there's a lot going on on a screen. But anyways, let's take another look at uh, this detail screen, let's go ahead and do the same thing for the, this actual info block. We're sharing the same styles uh, because you're doing a transition from one element to another on two different screens. They should look the same, obviously, and if they don't look the same, then that transition's uh, gonna kind of glitch out for you. But since it's a shared element transition, it should look the same between those two screens. So it kind of, it works out that way. Um, so let's do the text again, we'll wrap our little view down here in a transition. I'll put a shared element on here called info. Oops. We're gonna go down to the bottom of this view. And now when we click it, well obviously it's not going to work because we haven't added the shared uh, info to the details screen. So if I go over there, wrap my info container, I apologize for the crazy indentations here. But if I put transition down there, fix this, okay. Now if I go and click over, you can see the text is kind of working uh, and transitioning over as well. You can see the text is going down, the image is going up, it's transitioning over. But there is a bit of a glitch like I was talking about before because I think my font sizes are actually different here. So to fix this little glitch, We'll go to the panel title here and the panel subtitle here. And if we look at what we initially have, you can see we've got different font sizes and some different styling. Obviously, if you're using the same components, this makes it much easier. I'm not here just because it's a little example, but if I go and copy those styles over and now we do it, you can see we don't have that glitch. So these styles are really, really important to make sure you are using the same ones. Uh, it even like works here where the text is wrapping on two lines. You can see it'll go ahead and transition that perfectly for us. Now we do have one issue. If I choose something other than the first one, we're using the elements from the first thing still to do that transition. So that's where this index is coming into play. Basically each one of these where we set the shared property on a component, uh, it needs to be unique to make it to work. So what I'm gonna do is actually change this where it's going to be string interpolation in which we can then go ahead and make it unique by passing an index. And down here you can see each one has a unique index. We're then going ahead and actually passing that with our navigation parameters into the detail screen so that we can actually access them over here. And again, we wanna do the same thing. We're gonna go ahead and use string interpolation to make each one of these shared keys unique and matching the previous screen. So now when I choose a first one, it works just like it has been. If I choose a third one, you can see the image is coming all the way up from the bottom. Fourth one, same deal, because each one of these keys is now unique. Now transition, you can actually do more stuff with it. Say all of our text here, we wanna animate how, obviously the image and the header text are coming in from the previous screen. If we want to animate in this uh, lorem ipsum text, but it doesn't have a previous element, we can say how we want it to come in. 
So again, I'll wrap the element with a transition component. Got to go all the way to the bottom. And this time, instead of saying a transition of shared equals something, we can say a appear property. Okay, and then there's a handful of different properties that this library actually supports, which is outlined outlined in the documentation. And you could say we can we want it to scale in. And now when we go here, it kind of scales in. There's also a flip, for example. Uh, you can specify how it comes in, all kinds of different things. So for this one, let's say we want it to come from the right. Okay, so it comes in from the right. You can also do the same for disappear if you want it to do something different. We can say it should disappear to the left. So now when we go here, it's going to go and the text will come in from the right and it'll go out to the right as well with these different properties. So this is a really, really cool library if a shared element transition makes sense for whatever you're building. Um, if you're using React Navigation, you kind of get this for free. It, it works. It just built, is built right in. You just swap out your stack navigator with a fluid navigator and you're good to go. So I hope you found this valuable. Maybe you'll try it in one of your projects and I'll see you in the next lesson of React Native School.